Mankind uncompromisingly develops more and more new sources of energy. All four elements seem to have been mastered by restless geniuses. Power plants take energy from coal, gas, atom, river water, wind, and sunlight. From everything, they learn to extract the very power that gives light, heat, and food. And sure thing, leaving 70% of the planet undeveloped seemed like blasphemy to energy experts. Scientists say the sea is the world's largest battery. Off the coast of the United States alone, the theoretical annual energy potential of the waves is estimated at 2.64 trillion kilowatt hours, equivalent to about 64% of total US utility electricity generation in 2021. So what is the future of green energy beyond the seas and oceans? Why aren't we using them equally, if not with coal in the atom, then at least with solar and wind energy? For more than a century, scientists have been trying to not only catch the wave, but also to convert it into pure energy. The first of such attempts date back to 1799, when an application for a wave mill appeared in the Patent Office of Paris. This idea has been developed for quite a while, gradually turning into a wave turbine project, which for a long time was the most popular solution. It is located below the wave flow and is driven by air, which the wave displaces from a special chamber. The main drawback of this method is due, oddly enough, to the laws of physics and the very huge energy potential that everyone is hunting. Waves easily crush the steel blades of any water turbines, which means that such a station could not withstand strong waves. Oceanologists and economists also say their word about the shortcomings. The former focus their attention on the fact that the infrastructure of the power plant can harm marine flora and fauna, gradually destroying entire populations. The latter argues that both fisheries and shipping will be under threat. It is for these reasons that wave power plants have not been used for so long along with other options for green energy, representing only experimental samples. As is often the case in the era of high technology, startups became the solution. The first of them was born at a beer table, where the then ordinary neuroscientists and now the authors of an advanced startup, Patrick May and Christopher Ridgewell, discussed sound waves, which are always half a beat late, belatedly conveying the surrounding picture to us. Gradually, the conversation grew into a specific plan for predicting waves in real time, was transferred from the sound plane to the oceanic one, and as a result, the wave roller was born. The brainchild of the Finnish company AW Energy, an unparalleled converter of wave energy into electricity. Most recently, this innovative generator underwent a two-year from 2019 to 2021 field trial off the coast of Portugal with impressive results. The essence of the wave roller system is impressively simple. A movable panel and a power takeoff system are placed in the marine foundation. The panel is driven by the reciprocating movement of water caused by waves. Hydraulic piston pumps are attached to the panel and pump hydraulic fluid within a closed loop. Further, high-pressure fluids are fed into the energy storage system connected to the hydraulic motor and already it drives the generator directly. Wave Roller has several advantages over wind farms which are more popular today. They are visually non-obtrusive as, so to say, they sit tightly on the seabed at a fairly solid depth. What is more, their source of momentum is much more reliable since waves, unlike wind, are regular and therefore predictable. Meaning such a project, due to its stability in theory, will not lack funding. The social aspect is also not overlooked. Unlike windmills which require qualified personnel and specialized equipment, drones, equipped ships, wave roller requires shipbuilding skills that coastal residents have in abundance, which Christopher Ridgewell personally notes. As a result of the tests, even a prototype was already able to deliver 350 kilowatts of power. Can you imagine what results serial production will show? What's more, Wave Roller passed all the tests that fell to its lot for two years with honor, which is due to its design features. The load that the waves put on the converter is compensated by the fact that it is located on the seabed and accordingly has a lower center of gravity than any turbine. The results make it clear that Christopher Ridgewell's plans to conquer the energy of the sea have every chance of coming true. The AW Energy has already become a member of the revolutionary Neste Verturi Initiative, 
Having secured the support of ETT, Neste, and their partners in the electrification of Finnish communications. It has also consolidated the successes already demonstrated by subjecting the startup to repeated tests with the rank of Solar Impulse Efficient Solution, providing environmental friendliness and economic profitability of the Wave Roller. Despite all the advantages, Wave Roller still has a competitor. Back in 2012, the EcoWave Power Swedish company introduced the world to a 100 kilowatt plant that collects energy from waves and sunlight simultaneously. In the future, the company promised to increase the power to 5 megawatts, and this amount of energy can provide the entire British Overseas Territory, and this if you do not take into account Antarctica. The startup itself belongs to Ukrainian Inna Braverman, who left Ukraine for Israel after the Chernobyl disaster. At that time, the girl was 24 years old, and not only did she have serious experience in the field of energy, she also had in the corresponding education. However, she, instead of taking the path of least resistance, like the firms already existing at that time, and putting her station offshore, that is, at greater depths for the sake of big waves, decided to save on electricity transmission and station maintenance. Nine-tenths of the entire eco-wave power structure is located on land, while the water only has to support the floats. One can attach them to any stable object close to the coastline, be it a pier, a rock, or a breakwater. The secret, as in the case of the wave roller, is simple and largely repeats this startup. Floats under the influence of waves move hydraulic pistons that pressurize hydraulic fluid in a special chamber on land, after which this pressure drives a rotor that generates electricity. Further, electricity through the inverter enters the grid and voila, the light is on, the gadgets are charged, and the food is heated. According to the station's safety protocol, waves should reach a height of about half a meter. If the storm threatens the wholeness of the station, then the floats simply rise above the water level and maintain their position until the storm ends. Among other things, the hydraulic installation demonstrated the need to increase output without increasing the size. The obvious solution is solar panels that will be cooled by seawater, which will significantly increase their durability. Already this year, such a system was installed in the Israeli port of Jaffa. An official feed-in tariff has been set for the station, and the connection of the National Power Grid project is only a matter of time. Also, a similar project will soon be deployed in the Spanish port of Adriano. Test power supply capacity will be 1 megawatt. But if the indicators are satisfactory to stakeholders, the second half of the plant will be built and the total capacity will be 2 megawatt thus providing approximately 400 coastal households. Similar initiatives will soon be launched in California and Portugal, where quite possibly it will become known which of the two startups deserves more credibility. All in all, humanity has found the last piece of the ecological puzzle. Previously, it was quite difficult for the green energy industry to compete with the one that depends on minerals unpredictability, insufficient production, excessive sensitivity of components, and their intolerance to aggressive external influences. All these factors forced any businessman to opt for non-renewable resources since they guaranteed efficiency. Now, when scientists know about the possibility of waves bringing many gigawatts of energy and providing entire cities with it, the prospect of a completely environmentally friendly station no longer seems so unrealistic. Even the most avid conservatives understand that depending on oil, gas, coal, uranium, and other things is not only dangerous, but simply unprofitable. They will run out soon, which certainly does not threaten the forces of the sun, water, and air in the near future.